Yeah, that's probably cool. Yeah, the PowerPoint's probably best because otherwise I'll just be scribbling notes and then I won't be able to read them. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'll give you both. Okay. All right. So we'll go over eight proven ways to get pre foreclosure listings. So a little bit of background on myself. I'm born and raised in the Scranton Wilkes Bear area of Pennsylvania, northeastern PA. Uh, what's that? So I have family in that area. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, no, 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 you're good. You're good. I'm actually here right now. Um, visit visiting family. My wife and I live in Florida. I was just telling Joe, but um, we come back here for the holidays, so we just come back for long periods. So that's where I'm at now. Oh, cool. Yeah. So born and raised here, went to college here, ended up moving to Philadelphia right after college, jumped into real estate full-time as a real estate agent. Just like any new agent, I had no clue what the hell I was doing, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get listings. Just as luck would have it, I ended up getting a bunch of short sales. At the time, I thought it's because I was good at getting listings. Looking back on it, it's because nobody wanted them. Everybody hates short sales. So... I had no clue what a short sale was. I just learned by trial and error. And then eventually after like randomly listing so many short sales, I got noted in the local Philly market as being a short sale expert. So people were calling me, sending me these pre-foreclosure short sales. And then next thing you knew, I thought to myself, you know, there's a need for this on a national level because there's short sales everywhere. So in 2019, I founded my company now, which is Universal Short Sales. Little bit about what we do. It's a full service short sale processing company. So we work side by side with real estate agents on their short sale listings. So, so for example, one of you guys had a short sale listing and you don't want to you know, run around chasing the bank, waiting on hold, you know, trying to get documents signed, all that, you know, chaos that comes with short sales. You would partner with my company. It costs you $0. We get paid from the buyer on the HUD and we facilitate the entire short sale start to finish. And then you just worry about listing and selling the property. That's it. But the short sales, <clears throat> the seller is the bank? No. So- what a short sale is, it's, so it's it's the guy who owes the money is trying to get out of what he totally owes, right? Yeah. Correct. The seller is upside down, so there's yeah. no equity. And at the same time, they're behind on their mortgage payments. So after the short sale process, if the bank approves the short sale, they're going to let the homeowner sell for less than what they owe and just let them out of it. Right. That's That's what a short sale is. So there's no equity. And that's essentially what we do in a nutshell. We're a, we're a short sale company. That's our niche. That's what we specialize in. So, okay, let's uh, jump right into this. The reason I wanted to make this specifically for New York agents, right now, New York is one of the main markets coming into 2023 where there's just a lot of pre-foreclosure opportunity. In my personal opinion, I think the real estate agents that are going to really not only survive, but thrive coming in these next couple of years are going to be the agents that learn the pre-foreclosure game and actually pursue pre-foreclosure listings because there's a massive wave coming in New York. Um, right now, as we speak, there's over 20,000 and, and it's literally January coming into this new year. In my opinion, shit hasn't even hit the fan yet. And there's already over 20,000 people that are actively losing their properties to foreclosure. So, and that doesn't even um, include the properties that are all the way on the auction block. So Joe, Joe, I had mentioned to you a little bit about pre-foreclosure auctions and I'll <clears throat> mention it for Tracy quick. So Tracy, how the pre-foreclosure process works, whenever somebody becomes 90 days late, so right around that three month mark of not paying the bank, the bank puts a Liz pendants against their property and they start the foreclosure process. They start the process of taking their property back, taking the deed, seizing it. The very last step of that pre-foreclosure process is the bank gives the homeowner an auction date. They send the homeowner a letter and say, hey, John, you haven't paid us in forever. We are going to auction off your property in, let's say, 90 days. And they give them a date. And then that's when the real motivation kicks in. 
let me know if I'm going too fast or like I said, if you guys have any questions too. So I don't know what you guys are doing for your lead gen now, but the, these are two ways you could actually source these pre-foreclosure leads. All right, there's tons of list sources to choose from. These are two that I personally have used and that I'm familiar with. Number one is Red X. I haven't used them in a while, but it's around 40 to 80 bucks a month, depending on how many counties you actually want to target. And what I love about Red X is the skip tracing to actually get the homeowner's phone numbers. All of that is included in their service. I'm not a salesman, by the way. I don't get any commission. I'm just telling you guys what I use. Um, so, so you could use multiple counties. That's going to affect how much you pay. But again, the skip tracing is included, which is really convenient. And in my opinion, for specifically for listing agents and real estate agents, rather than people trying to get like motivated sellers to buy the property, I think Red X, there's a bit better value for um, realtors because when you buy Red X, you're, you could get pre-foreclosures, you could get daily expireds, and then you could also get FISBOs all under one roof. So what do you guys use now? Do you guys like, I'm actually just curious. Do you guys use a... Um, I was using initially, what is it called, a Mojo dialer, but then I stopped because I felt like it was just a, a little bit too expensive, and I felt like I was just paying too much, and I was had to scale back a bit. But I also used PropStream. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's a um a second one, and that's what I use PropStream. I love PropStream. We use uh, Land Voice. Do you know Land Voice? I've heard of Land Voice. I've never used it though. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, prop stream. Then my then I won't even jump into that because Tracy uses it, and Joe. It sounds like you're all set. But if you ever did want to try out prop stream, it's very convenient, specifically for pre foreclosures, because it's very like it has a pre foreclosure heading right on the homepage. So you literally and click. Those two do the same thing. The two Red X and prop stream do the same thing. Um. Yes. Same exact concept. Again, Red X is going to have better value for specifically for real estate agents, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, it's supposedly the same leads. Now, actually, PropStream is better for pre-foreclosures because you can go back and manually pull gigantic lists, you know, and you could sift through them. Now, a little tip I'll give you guys is if, if you're planning on going after pre-foreclosure listings, you want to pull two separate lists. What everybody does, they automatically just say, okay, I'm going to go after pre-foreclosures. And then they pull all the pre-foreclosures in their county. What you want to do is pull a Liz Pendens list. Okay. It's going to be called a notice of default or a Liz Pendens, one or the other. Tracy, I could tell you in prop stream, it's, it's an NOD. It's going to be called. Pull that separate. And then once you have that list saved, go back in and pull an auction list separate. Because those are two types of motivated sellers. And your messaging to both of them, especially if you're cold calling, your messaging to both of those lists is completely different. So don't just lump them all in as one. So it's auction or versus what? What's NOD, the notice, notice of default. Okay. Yeah. Break those into two lists and then market to them separately. All right. The first one that I absolutely love is phone prospecting. It's old school. I don't know if you guys are doing this or not, but when it comes specifically to pre-foreclosure leads, it works. It's very, very effective. Now, getting people on the phone is a little difficult because a lot of people in this situation, the bank's coming after them. It's a high pressure situation. They almost go into hiding, I like to say. But when you do get people, it's a very effective way to getting listing appointments. Now, I don't know if you guys are doing this already. I don't know if you have set sales scripts you and your teams use, but my suggestion and what personally works for me, specifically when calling pre-foreclosures, is I like to stay away from the hardline sales scripts. I know there's a lot of sales systems that teach to go right in for the kill. I think it's a bad idea when you're um, cold calling pre-foreclosures. As I mentioned before, very, very high stress situations. The last thing on earth, I promise you, somebody in pre-foreclosure, the last thing on earth they want to do is pick up their phone 
and and get the vibe from you that you're just trying to monetize, list and sell and get a commission from their situation. So you definitely want to say no to those hardline aggressive sales scripts. What I teach people to do and what I like to do with my team is we we take a very laid back sales approach when it comes to calling these pre foreclosures. Very to the point, but very, very conversational. Let them talk. They're going to want to vent about how their bank is screwing them and how the situation isn't fair and just let them talk. Literally let them, let them, talk. you'll be, some of these phone calls, they take a long time. You'll, you'll be on the phone for 30 to 60 minutes with some of these hot leads, yeah. but, but I would avoid going, going for the kill, you know, on that first phone call for sure with these specific leads. Yeah. Actually the first person that have said this to me, and I feel like this is like way smarter because when you talk, it's like you just said, I feel like when I was using those scripts, I felt like I wasn't connecting with them, wasn't getting to them. They were just, yeah. it didn't work. Let's put it like that. It didn't work. Yeah. Well, you have to look at it from their perspective, you know, especially in your guys' market, New York. I mean, I don't have to tell you, you guys know way more than me about the New York market. It's super competitive. Mm -hmm. You're not the only person cold calling them. So, so when your competitors are calling them, they're all using those hard sales scripts. Right. So, so, so if you show empathy, they're going to relate to that and you're going to get the business over your competitors just from doing that. And then another cool thing with these pre foreclosures, this is huge. You want to leverage. This is why I don't like the bland sales scripts because you can't do this if you're following that. So a pre foreclosure is a niche. When you're calling these lists, you're calling someone in a niche specific situation. So you want to brand yourself on the phone with them and let the seller know hey, I'm not just randomly calling you to get a listing. I'm calling you because I specialize in helping people in your specific situation. I specialize in pre-foreclosure situations. That little nugget will go a long way because again, your competition who's all cold calling them, they're not approaching it from that angle. They're all just doing their, following their random script, which is not tailored to pre-foreclosure leads. So that's another big one that will separate you, telling them <clears throat> that that you specialize in pre-foreclosures. Bob, do you leave a voicemail? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you guys do that? I'm curious. Do you leave a voicemail? Well, you no. know, we're in, this, in, in New York, we have this weird situation where the governor has um, prohibited cold calling mm -hmm. uh, for realtors. So we're not allowed to cold call. So even nope. with FISBOs and stuff like that, we can only call somebody if we potentially have a client for them. So we can say, I'm sorry, FISBO, I have a client that's interested. Um, would you be willing to pay a 2% commission if I bring them by? You know, that, that sort of, you have to have a client. So it's a little bit of a weird, I mean, I think that this, maybe there's a little bit of room to say, I'm offering you a service. Yeah to help you negotiate with your bank. And this is what we do. And I work with universal and, you know, so yeah. we're doing this. So it is, you're offering them something specific for their house versus just cold calling them. So it, there's probably a way to. Yeah. You know, I knew there were regulations, Joe. I didn't know he straight up outlawed it though. Holy. Yeah. It's crazy. It, okay. it's, it's, let's just say we have to find creative ways to do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, then, if you can't straight up call them out of the blue as like a cold lead, you could still use these concepts, especially the one when you do get in front of them, you know, that you actually specialize in their situation. That'll still go a long way. But yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that will go away. I mean, it was sort of surprising that it was extended again. And I just last week called the legal hotline, you know, here up in Westchester. And they're like, yep, yep. Governor Hochul extended it. And Anyway, that, that, that's neither here nor there. So, so we'll, well, that, we'll, well, that's we'll good for me to know because honestly, we do business in New York and obviously I deal with a lot of New York realtors and I've never, that's the first time I've heard that it's actually outlawed. I just thought they were making it stricter, but yeah, that yeah. Was crazy. I know. I mean, and then you have the people who don't, you know, it's such an awkward thing because you're not going to go yeah. to jail. You know what I mean? It's just right. like, so someone would have to, some somebody else would have to raise an issue. And so I yeah. feel like- happens anyway so yeah. anyway sorry yeah. go ahead no, no 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 you're good you're good 
So, <laughs> all right. So then one thing I like to do with email prospecting. Now I don't like cold emails just out of the blue. I like to mix it in. Email is very effective to mix in with whatever lead generation tactics you're currently doing. So I can't use cold call as an example. I guess you guys aren't doing that, but let's say you're doing SMS or door knocking or you know, writing, writing, writing people letters. The point is if you have a list of, let's say a thousand specific prospects that you're marketing to emailing them as well, I found in my business is a good way to reach people who you're not reaching on that same list from your, from your other marketing methods. So emailing is a very good complimentary marketing method to your specific list. So if you're sending a mailing to a thousand people, add the email to that same thousand people, put them on an email drip because you'd be surprised. A lot of people, they might not open their mail or they might have thrown away your letter or, or, or whatever, but a lot of people will respond to emails. So, so it's a good way to just have a higher response rate on the list that you're targeting. And what I specifically like to do, it's super simple. It's not rocket science, but it's very effective. I have a very high open rate on the cold, cold emails I send people just by doing what I'll give you guys right here. The subject line, so many people, they put this long drawn out, like they try to catch you with a hook. What I do is I literally just put their property address without the city or state. So if it's one, two, three main street, New York, New York, I'll just put as the property address. One, two, three, Main Street. Because as they're scrolling through their email, that's going to pique their curiosity because they're like, who is this guy? And like, what is, what does he want with my property? And like, they're going to open the email. That's all you want is for them to open the email. So like I said, it's not rocket science. It's not like some like amazing invention, but, but it's really effective. Just put the subject, just put the address. That's all. <clears throat> and the body of the email I keep short and sweet. You know, there's all these email templates that are, you know, you want to catch them with a hook and then you want to, I, I literally just get right to the point immediately in the email. People have very low attention spans these days. They do not want to read your long, cold email. So use the subject property address and then get right to the point. Are you looking to sell? A couple lines. And if you're really looking to send it to a large list, um, there's a way instead of obviously using a VA or typing the emails out yourself, you could send unlimited automated emails. I don't know if you guys use anything like that, but have you heard of REI reply or SendGrid? I well, heard of REI. Yeah, no, no, this is actually amazing. You could have a list of like literally 20,000 people to, and, and you could automate it where you come up with an email template and then this system's email blast it for you. Like, it's crazy. You could reach thousands of people with, with a click of a button. And then you just see when they respond and you call them. It's, it's, it's actually amazing. So you want to do REI reply, but then you need to integrate it with SendGrid. Before you ask, I have no idea how to do that. I hired somebody off of Upwork to do that. You said SendGrid? Send grid, S E N D G R I D. It's one word. That's an email blasting system. That's that's what allows. So so you send your emails from R E I reply. It's called. Okay, you craft your email from there, and then you integrate it with Send Grid because Send Grid allows you to send unlimited emails. I, I mean, if you guys are techie, do it, try to try to figure it out yourself. If not, just hire somebody. I think it cost me all in all like 180 bucks, the whole project. And um, are you, when you send it, so my email address is my, you know, realty email address. Yeah. Does it make sense to use that and people will still open that or should it be like my set up a Gmail address or something? I would probably set up a different one. So I use one that's like connected to my website. Like it's connected to a website domain. So it's Bob Vieira at universal short Um, I don't know if you could use your personal one. That's a good question. Well, I, I would just set up one. Cause I, I mean, 
I certainly, you know, we have the corporate one, which is the realty one, right? Joe Stasco at grandluxrealty.com. Okay. Who you're with, Tracy. But, you know, does that make any difference if it's coming from there? Or is there a better open rate if it's just coming from Joe Stasco at Gmail or JG Stasco at Gmail? Good question. Yeah. Something? Yeah. I've never split test them, Joe. I really never have. I've just used the one, you know, associated with my business. Use universal would, for sales. Yeah. You use universal for sales. Okay. All right. Correct. I would do that one. I'm sure it doesn't matter. No, actually, there's a technical reason why I had to that I don't remember. The guy that was setting it up for me, he... um. He told me I had to use one attached to my domain, I'm pretty sure, but I forget why. So use that one. But this is awesome. I mean, right now I'm hitting list of like thousands and thousands of people. Literally, it's just automated. It just does it for you. And then you just sit back. And when you see someone responds that they want to sell, boom, you get your listing appointment from it. Right. So it's awesome. That's a quick question, Mark. Yeah. How do you feel about property charts when it comes to pre foreclosures? Never used it. I know what it is. I've never used it when it comes to pre-foreclosures. So. Yeah, I've heard of that too, Tracy. I've, I've had several people mention Property Shark to me, and I actually don't know it that well either. So have you okay. used it, Tracy? Have you used it? I have I have used it, but never for pre-foreclosures, just to like, you know, get the, you know, property information. But I see that, you know, there's a pre-foreclosures tab and they do send out lists uh, pre foreclosures and it is an auction date on property chart. Right. But right. I've never actually went in and fully used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just worked with a buyer for a house that was in pre, pre foreclosure and I got close with the agent who was listing it and he was using property shark and we were talking, he was based in Long Island. So and I'm in Westchester. So we were talking about how I could help him because it's too far for him, you know, to do the showing. So, but he was talking about property short. Okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. You guys doing any SMS prospecting text message blast or no? Not me. I don't know. Maybe Tracy is. This is another one, guys. I would suggest doing this. It's very cheap. And again, use REI reply. I probably should get a commission from them, but I don't. I'm just telling you what you I should. <laughs> right. So you guys are probably thinking like this dude's definitely getting a good, he's like pushing us to sign up. No, but um, yeah, it is amazing. The scale you get with it is crazy. And the cool thing is there's not a lot of real estate agents that use this. This is very investor. A lot of wholesalers, a lot of flippers looking for off-market deals. They're the ones using REI Reply. Not a lot of realtors that I know send these massive texts. I would start doing that. I would start doing that. You could just reach so many people and you literally set it up and it texts for you. You don't have to hire a human being. You send it and then whenever somebody responds, it comes to your phone. It's, it's, it's crazy. You could hit a list of thousands of people to set it up. So again, go to REI reply and then they'll just walk you through. And, and then another one is launch control. I've never used that, but I know people that use that. So just in case you want to test another one, it's launch control. Are you guys allowed to send cold text messages to pre-foreclosures if you wanted in New York? I haven't heard anything about it. So I'm going to say yeah. yes. I'm going to say yes. I've never, yeah, like, okay. like just said, I've never heard of a, uh, I'm saying no to that. Yeah. See, creative yeah. ways of getting around it. You see? Exactly. You see? Yeah, no, no, for real. There you go. There you go. We just cracked the code on this. But um, especially for auction leads, when like you get those auction properties and you send someone a text, like these people feel hopeless a lot of them. And you send them a text message. Hey, my name's Tracy. I specialize in helping people here. You know, let's hop on a call. Let's talk. I can help you with the situation, something like that. Everybody looks at their phone too. Think about it. If you get a text message right now, you're at least going to look. Right, so, right, right. This is crazy effective. I have no clue why realtors are not doing this. It's very investor heavy. Real estate agents, for the most part, are not taking advantage of this. So <clears throat> questions on SMS or any of that? No, I would love it if, I don't know if you can just send uh maybe after this, just sort of a sample message that you send. Okay. You know, like just say like, this is what I say, like this is the, cause it's short and it should be to the point. And 
and, and I'm not sure what's the right thing to be saying at that. Here's what I can tell you. In this slide, I used to have an example and I had to get rid of it because the phone companies, the actual carriers, they, they, they started to fight. Like if you sound too spammy or if let's say you and I are hitting the same market and we're sending the same message at blast, they're going right, to flag right, that. Right. Not a big deal. You don't get in trouble or anything, but they flag it. So, yeah. so for me to do that, I was giving people templates, which I would love to share if I had one that yeah, worked. But then everyone's saying the same thing and then it ends up being- Not even same. that. Not even that, but I'm giving you a template that is going to get flagged. You know what I'm saying? Like it might get flagged. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. so what I would, so they're going to cap you at like 62 or 63 characters. So it's going to have to be short. Yeah. But the advantage you guys have is your messaging as a realtor, I think you're you're not going to get flagged. You guys should be fine. Just send something short and sweet. Like, hey, you know, can we hop on a call and chat about the product? I mean, just something short. Don't sound spammy. Don't sound like a bot. You know, just sound like a regular dude and you'll get a good response rate. The investors are all getting flagged because they're all saying the same thing. Hey, I want to, hey, did you consider selling the private one to the main street? I'll make you a cash offer. Like they're all saying the same thing. You guys as realtors, you have more, weapons in your um arsenal stuff you guys could say right so just keep it short and sweet but like like i said i doubt a ton of people in your guys market are sending mass cold text but you're acknowledging that you know that they're in pre-foreclosure or you're just reaching out and saying i negotiate with banks on your behalf and you know okay okay great question number one no i would suggest not saying hey Hey, Bob, I see you're in pre-foreclosure. Can we hop on a call? That's that's a little too invasive in my opinion. Okay. So just be, be more passive, like I was saying on the phone calls. Number two, do not say the word negotiate because especially in New York where they have real strict laws, your intentions are good, but they could come back to you, especially if they get like a hungry shark lawyer that wants a lawsuit on his hands. They could come back and say, hey, this guy Joe, he's a realtor, but he's um, texting people promising that he's going to negotiate debt for them. Yeah, yeah. Don't say the word negotiate right off the bat. So just, I don't know, it's tough to say. You know, say something like, oh, man, I don't know for a realtor. That's a good question. I don't know what your messaging should be, but. Um, Me neither. Definitely don't say negotiate. Yeah, you know, so I won't say negotiate. That, I, well, that's why I want to get the messaging right, right? Which is like, I don't want to acknowledge, I don't want to say, oh man, <laughs> you're screwed and I'm going to help you. I know what you could say. say, I, say help. Help. I would say, hey, John, Joe here, I'm a realtor with X. If you have a few minutes, you know, I love to chat about, I could help with one, two, three main street. Or, hey, hey, we just sold another, you reference, this is one thing that investors can't do that you could leverage. Hey, just sold a property down the street in a similar situation. Do you have a couple minutes? Love to explain how I so can there's help. Nothing, so you're saying it's more like any other pitch to anybody else. Yeah. Like there's nothing unique about the messaging that you're sending to these oh. guys. It's the same message I would say to anybody, right? Which is like, I sold something down the street. Yeah. If you're interested in selling or if you're interested in talking and understanding the value of your home or what we can do. And yeah. So you don't reference... Because before you were saying, when you called, you were saying, oh, I specialize. This is what I do. I specialize. But in pre yes. Yes. But that's not in the beginning of the call. That's not your pitch. Right. As you're talking to them, building rapport, then you mention that. And hey, by the way, not only do I work this area, I, I have helped numerous people and I specialize in helping people in this specific situation. We know how to navigate the pre-foreclosure process. We can help you. That kind of stuff is powerful. So text messaging is great, but like you don't want to craft that in a pitch in a text message. The whole point of sending massive text messages is to get them on the phone. Get right. them to agree to talk to you. Hey man, let's hop on a quick call. And then you craft your message of, hey, I can navigate the pre-foreclosure process. I could help you. I am a specialist in this. So we're saying, I mean, I guess what you're saying is that these people are going to need to sell. And so getting a message just happening, happening to get a message from a realtor, you already have like a narrowed group. So these people are like gonna sell. So they happen to they happen to get a message from a realtor and then they think, okay, let me talk to a realtor. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. And the way you craft it though, you could be kind of sly in the sense of, 
hey, I just helped someone down the street something in a similar situation. You could test it and try to say pre-foreclosure. I, I personally think that's a little invasive, you know, but I mean, you know, if you sit down and think about it, you could craft it in a way where it's like, hey, you, you know, they're going to want to hop on the phone and hear what you have to say. So but when you're reaching out, so you're yeah. your company and when you're reaching out, so yeah. you're different than a realtor. Yep. When you're reaching out on these emails, what are you saying in your messaging? You're saying I am crafting it different every time because I get flagged. I'm going to get flagged a lot more than you. Mostly mm -hmm. I keep it short and sweet. And I say something like, hey, calling about the property. Uh, hey, reach out about one, two, um, one, three, Manchie. my name's Bob Vieira. Have you considered of letting go, letting, letting go of the property? I say letting go because selling got flagged. So the carriers flagged it and blocked my messages. So I'm always playing around like that, but it's literally just a sentence or two that, and, and, and I'm always changing it. That's why I don't have a template that works. I am constantly changing it. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. You guys will have an advantage though as agents, trust me, because it's less like it's, you know, you're not just reaching out asking if they want to sell like an investor. All right. This is, <clears throat> this is one of my favorites. This is a really cool one. So you want to go back in time. I started doing this right around the time COVID hit and it was really, really effective. Go back in the MLS to expired listings all the way back years. It sounds crazy, but it works years to the end of 2019, right before the pandemic. There was a bunch of people, especially in New York, who were behind on their mortgage. They were upside down. They were in pre-foreclosure. They were in trouble. And they listed with a realtor. They had to sell ASAP. They were motivated sellers on the MLS. COVID hit. As you guys know, all the moratoriums came in place. And banks could no longer foreclose. So the pandemic for a lot of these homeowners was a saving grace. The harsh reality is a lot of the people who were listed before COVID hit, they're not in a better situation financially. They were able to hold off a little bit. I mean, you guys see it. I don't have to tell you. And now a couple of years later, banks are starting to foreclose. The moratoriums are ending. These same people are going to be in trouble. Now, when you go back and pull these lists, it's not going to be a long list of expires. It's going to be a short list, but it's a highly effective list because it's people, you know, 100% for a fact were in trouble and they got saved by the pandemic. So if you guys operate in multiple counties, I would suggest pulling the expireds from multiple counties just to get your numbers up. But again, it's not going to be, it's going to be a small batch of people, but there's some listings in there for you. Questions on that? All right. And then just to beef it up, because it's going to be a short list, pull short sales, and then also pull pre-foreclosures that like aren't short sales that have like, you know, they have equity. They're just behind on their mortgage just so there's more people. So I don't know what that looks like in your guys' MLS. If you have to, like, I don't know if there's like a short sale button or pre-foreclosure button you have to click when you list it. No, no, there's not. I don't know. Okay. Well then it might be a little bit of legwork for you if it's not, but trust me, it's worth it because a lot of these people, they were just, they were just kind of chilling for like a couple of years. If you think, especially in New York, New York was one of the most strict States when it came to preventing banks from foreclosing on people. A lot of landlords in New York still can't get people out of their properties. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of people that were just kind of hanging out. Okay. We're good. And now they're in a situation. So, so there are definitely, uh, really good listings and your competition. I'd be very surprised if anybody else is doing this. <clears throat> so questions on that one before I move on. Yeah. Figure out how to do it. <laughs> Honestly, if you guys are going to take anything from this, please do that one. I'm telling you that one. And then the modifications are my favorite, but I saved that one for last. Cause I love that one, but, but definitely do that one. Okay. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I, 
want to put this in here because in the very beginning, I said, when you guys are pulling lists to pull two separate lists, the notice of default, and then go back and pull the pre-auction. This is the reason you want to do it. Your messaging to the pre and ignore the phone prospecting. I guess you guys can't do that, but SMS or whatever. When you talk to someone that is in a auction situation where the bank says, Hey, you haven't paid us in forever. We are sending you to, we are auctioning off your property. I'm telling you something clicks where they become an extremely motivated seller. They go into panic mode. So you could come in and, and be their saving grace. Your, your messaging to them is not as laid back as it is with a normal pre foreclosure. You need to have urgency when you're talking to these people. You still don't want to be too pushy, but but you want to be urgent. You need to let them know, listen, the chickens have come home to roost. We need to move fast. You need to sign with me that we have to move on this fast. And something amazing about these, a lot of people, what happens is once the auction date gets so close, they lose hope and they give up because they think they have no more options. And a lot of your competition, the other realtors and investors in the market, they think the same thing. Let's say the auction date is like a week or a couple of weeks away. People think that's too close to do anything. The biggest thing I could suggest doing, learn the system in New York of how to, in your county, every county has a specific system. To, to get an auction date postponed and pushed back to give you time to sell their property. This is huge. Learn what that is in the county you operate, and that's going to give you a gigantic advantage to get listings of people where the auction date is coming up. So learn that. Or if you have a really good attorney, get in bed with them, have a conversation with them now, be like, hey man, I'm going to start bringing you people that, that have active auction dates, do you know how to get this postponed? Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, be careful with attorneys because one, you don't need an attorney to do this. I'm not telling you to like pretend you're an attorney, don't do any of that, but, but homeowners could do it by themselves with your guidance because what happens is most people in this situation cannot afford to pay an attorney several thousand dollars to do this. I'm just telling you. We have a bunch of these we're dealing with now across a bunch of different states. And there's not one of them we're working with an attorney on because they can't afford it. So learn how to do it. And then you could got, you could tell your homeowner what to do. All you have to do to learn this, call your county. Hey, we have this property. Even if you don't have a property going to auction yet, call them and find out what the process is to apply to get it postponed. That way, you know, when you're ready. Usually it's just filling out a form and then the homeowner goes and hands it into the court. And then they get a court date in front of a magistrate, a judge. And then they um, tell the judge what their hardship is. Listen, Mr. Judge, I can't um, pay my mortgage because of X, Y, and Z happened. And then the judge will grant them a 90, 120 day extension. And then that gives you more than enough time to list and sell for them. This is huge. And then I have to put in, I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice because people are weird. <laughs> Bob told me <laughs> to pretend I'm an attorney and are you guys cool on that one yeah okay awesome and then pre-auction door knocking I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one I just have to throw that in because that's something I'm doing now and it works I don't personally do it I hire a team to do it I actually partner with agents to do it it's pretty cool because they guarantee the listing and then you know we work on the short sale if it's a short sale mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's something there's really not much to say about it. If you have the stomach for it, do it. If not, you could partner with, yeah, <laughs> Tracy yeah. shake your head, hell no. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But you know what you can do? You could find newer agents that are hungry in your office and you know they'd be happy to do it. And, and pre-auction door knocking is a lot better than door knocking a target area because when you door knock just a regular target area, you know, it's random. So your conversion rate of getting listings is going to be very, very low. You're going to have to door knock a shit ton of people to get a listing. However, when you door knock people that are headed to the auction block, they're super motivated. So it's a targeted list. So, I mean, you'll, you'll get listings from this. It's just, you know, do you have the stomach for it or does your team have the stomach for it? So 
Think about it though, because I'm telling you, younger agents will do this. You know, people that just want want those listings and then you could strike a deal where, hey, listen, we could co-list it and I'll teach you the business this way, something like that. So it's food for thought. So Bob, you're saying Tracy and I are not younger agents? <laughs> newer. <laughs> I'm newer a young agent. agent, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> newer agent. Tracy's like, I don't give a shit what you tell. I don't care if there's a pot of gold when I knock on that door, Bob. Shut up. I'm not doing it. I can't imagine door knocking in Manhattan. No, oh, God. Yeah. Oh. It's, just, it's like, all right, you can got to go around because their house is. Oh, wow. That's like why that. I said no. But we're going to get in the building and I mean, forget it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That is a problem. So, so I'm actually doing this with an agent in California, Oakland. And we're actually running into that problem that there's so many apartment complexes. She's like, I, you know, what do you want me to do? And they're like, you can't even get in the building. And if you do, like, it's a mess. So that is a real problem, Jeff. All right. Last but not least, I love this one. Mortgage modifications. Do you guys know what a mortgage mod is? You want me to brief you real quick? Okay. Yes, please brief me on. Okay, okay. A mortgage modification is when someone is behind on their mortgage payments, but they want to keep their property, which is most people. They want to stay in their property. A lot of times there's an emotional attachment. You know, they raise their family and their kids in the property, whatever the case is. They fell on hard times, lost their job, whatever. They can't pay the bank, but they're like, I want to keep my property. So what they do is they apply for a mortgage modification to their bank. This is when they fill out an application about all of their finances. They have to submit bank statements, pay stubs, tax returns, all into their mortgage lender. Their mortgage lender looks all that over and based on the homeowner's financials, they determine whether or not they're going to let them stay in their property, okay, and reinstate their mortgage. Now, the sad reality of these are 50% or more of these get denied because somebody applies for it, but if your financial situation isn't visibly better, the bank is going to say, no, I'm sorry. And then what happens is they're forced to sell the property. Now, the reason these are so effective for you is because when you talk to someone who's behind and they tell you, nope, I'm doing a mortgage mod, I'm good, 99.9% .9 of real estate agents will hang the phone up because it's a dead lead. Uh, all right, they don't want to sell. What do you want me to do? Next, on to the next. Do not hang up the phone. What you want to do is build rapport with the person. Do not convince them to sell. Do not convince them why they need to sell and list with you. Do not do that. Wish them luck and support them. Say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, listen, I definitely appreciate the fact you want to stay in your house. I totally get it. I wish you the best of luck in your mortgage modification. Listen, if you don't mind, I'm going to check in with you throughout the process because mortgage modifications take months. They take forever to do. So what you're going to do is on the phone, just say, listen, best of luck to you. I hope it works out. They take forever. I'm going to check in with you every couple of weeks just to drop in, see if you needed anything on my end for any reason. What that's going to do is as you're checking in with them, building rapport throughout the process, every other agent that they spoke with hung up the phone because to them, it's not a lead. As you're checking in with them, if it gets denied, you will, like, I hate to make guarantees, but like, this is so effective. You will almost 100% get the listing. And the point of these is it's a long game. You're going to build up every person you speak with that's behind on their mortgage, that saying they want to keep their house. You're, you're building a pipeline of these people and you're following up with them every three weeks. That's the system I use every once every three weeks on the dot. A phone call, if they don't answer, make sure you leave a voicemail so they hear your voice and your brand is in their head and send them a text message. Just checking in, making sure you don't need anything. Want to see how everything's coming along. Super casual. This is my favorite way. Like, I wish I had more of these. Like, I, I love mortgage modifications. And the best part about them is there's no list. So your competitor can't, type in a list of people with mortgage modifications, buy it and start calling them. This is all organic. This is going to come from the times we're entering into right now. We're entering into a recession. 
there's massive job layoffs. People are going to not be able to pay their mortgage. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just the truth. So, so just from you marketing for listings, you are going to run into tons of people who can't pay, but they want to stay in their house. Those are golden listing leads for you. And rant. And you're finding the, the, these people because they're telling you this on your call. They're telling you it on the call. So in my business, we're obviously, we're very pre-foreclosure heavy. So I don't know what your guys' plans are. I would suggest marketing heavy to pre-foreclosures. But even if you're not, these next couple of years, you are going to run into people that are going to tell you on the phone that they know, I don't want to sell. I'm behind, but you know we're working it out with the bank. Whenever they say that, stay on the call, build rapport, and then just touch base with them. We get a lot of business like this. It's very, very effective. Yeah, once once every three weeks, figure out what works for you. I'm sure every situation is different, but um, the moneymaker for us is once every three weeks on the dot. And again, um, make sure you leave a voicemail because a lot of times they're not going to answer, but but they're going to hear your voicemail, send them a text message too, and then they're going to be used to seeing Tracy, 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 Joe, Joe, Joe. It's going to be etched in their head to the point where the bank unfortunately denies them if that happens. And then, you know, they have, I mean, they're forced to sell or get foreclosed on. And then you're going to be the first, not only are you the first person in their, in their mind, but even if they forget to call you, boom, three weeks later, you're calling them anyway, because you're creating a system and never stop calling. Never put it in whatever CRM you guys use and just make it automated. Don't stop calling them because it modifications take months and months and months. So it's a long play, but it but it really works. Any other questions on the mods? Yeah, that's the one thing I know I said this before, but like like if you're gonna take one thing, because a lot of it's basic, like calling, texting, all that stuff's basic. This is like the one thing you want to implement. You really do, because it's a long play, but man, especially if you do this for a year straight, you just keep putting people in a pipeline that tell you they want to stay in their house. You just keep putting people in a pipeline. I mean, coming into like next year, you're going to have listings start to fall into your lap. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's just a system. You're, you're like plugging them into like a wheel that just keeps turning. I have over a hundred people right now that I'm just constantly following up with. I actually have to outsource it. I'm in the process of outsourcing the touches to a, to a VA. Because over the years, I just keep putting them in, putting them in, and then eventually it works. That's all I got for you. Bonus tip, I'm giving you permission when you're reaching out to these pre-foreclosures, if you talk to them, leverage my brand. Leverage universal short sales. This will win you the listing. If it's a short sale, if they have equity, it's not a short sale, do your thing. Don't worry about me. If they're underwater and they have no equity and they're behind in it and your listing is going to be a short sale, telling them that you partner with a professional short sale company will almost guarantee you the business because it's going to put you ahead of everybody else. It'll make you a lot more comfortable. It'll make them more comfortable to give you the business knowing that you partner with someone who all they do is short sales. Again, that's only if it's a short sale situation. So- just discuss then, um, discuss a scenario of how that would work. So yeah. okay. he work the client, yeah. he needs to do a short sale or, or else it's going to get auctioned off or yep. it's going to be foreclosed on. And I say to him, listen, we work with a company, Universal Short Sales, we'll team up um, and they'll work with you and help you through this process. 100%. So you guys in New York are going to see a ton of short sales coming into these next couple of years. People are losing equity. People are massive job layoffs. People are, I mean, there's already over 20,000 active pre-foreclosures. So a short sale is when, let's say, for example, you're going to list a property for a half a million. That's what it's worth. Half a million bucks. But the homeowner owes the bank 550. So they're underwater. And then on top of that, 
they're starting to fall behind on their mortgage payments. That's a short sale. The only way they could sell is to sell it short and get out from under the situation. And then, so you, <clears throat> you run between the seller and the bank. Yeah. That's I have where a you step in. Yep. Yep. We have a 12 step, step system I created over the years. Uh -huh. And yeah. Yep. We, we execute every single step from start to finish to get the short sale completed and yep. deal directly with the bank. Correct. The seller and the bank. And then you get paid. From the buyer. From the buyer. The buyer. What we do is everything is disclosed in the MLS to the yep. buyer's agent. Before they even show the property, they know the buyer is responsible for the fee, which is $10,000 flat or 3% of the purchase price. So before making the offer anything, they factor this in and then they sign a contract with us, you know, um, locking all that in. So there's never any like people showing up to closing. What's this fee? What do I owe? Everything's transparent. So the, the, the offer is submitted. Is it submitted through an online um, portal that says, okay, here's the offer that we're making. Is that what you mean? Like that? Um, the buyer. So the the seller would in effect sign an agreement with you to work with you. The seller, correct. So you as the listing agent, once you secure the listing, you you introduce us directly to the seller. We have a qualification process. We go over with the seller. We make sure they're totally clear on what a short sale is, that it's the right fit for them. Answer all their questions. Right from there. Yeah, the seller signs a third-party authorization, giving us permission to deal with their bank directly on their behalf. Right. Okay. I mean, I feel like, I don't know what you think, Tracy, but I feel like getting the listing, like leveraging you will help get the listing, you know, versus yeah, so you're saying like, oh, once you have the listing, then come to me. I feel like I'm leveraging you to have a conversation with them so that we can get the listing. A thousand percent. And that's why I added this in. Because so many people do that. So like, really, it's not my idea. I can't even say it's a great, it's a great idea. A guy, a um, real estate agent from Williamsport, central Pennsylvania. He actually came to me and, and it was like a light bulb moment. He's like, Hey, Bob, because we did a couple short sales on his listings. He's like, Hey, Bob, could I add a tab or like, could I start telling people in advance? Like you just said, Joe, before I get the listing that we work with you to like, help me get it. I'm like, that's actually a really good idea. Sure. Like, why not? So then I just added that in me giving you guys permission to do that. Right. Right. So, okay, great. Well, that makes yeah. sense. I think that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And then this yeah. is how we keep in touch. There's my email. Um, I'll probably look you guys up on Facebook. And then if you guys are on YouTube, I started a channel. It's actually grown pretty quick. I have like 105 subscribers already. It just started it. Um, I'm always posting real estate news, really quick clips, you know, unemployment rates, uh, you know, pre-foreclosure info, all that good stuff. So, you know, if you guys are interested in that, follow me on there. Well, I, I'm going to ask you one other question. When Please, you were setting later. up some of the stuff with uh, the Red X and the prop stream and you used, uh, you used another guy to help you do that, right? A, a tech, you had a tech guy help you set that Not up. with the prop stream. Not with the prop. The prop stream is easy. I use a tech guy specifically with the SMS. To send the blood. No, oh. no, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. With the email. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The email. And so that's just a tech guy. I mean, because we have a tech guy here, but they don't need to be particularly knowledgeable about these programs. I mean, or do Good they? Question. I would ask your tech guy first for sure. So you don't have to pay anybody. But if, but if they're not specific with how to integrate, because specifically you have to get REI reply, is how you send the text messages. Then you have to get send grid is what you have to integrate it. So then you could send unlimited because if you're just using REI reply, like my dumbass right. did at the beginning without doing research, I was trying to send unlimited. And I was getting blocked. The carrier's like, what are you trying to do here? Because right. you, you, you're only allowed to send like 200 or 300 a day or something. SendGrid allows you to just blast out as like thousands of emails to people. Right, right, right. Do you know whether... Um, I'm just thinking about 
there are a couple of steps to this, right? To get this thing, everything yeah. set up and, and, and doing all that. Is there, and we have a tech guy and I can ask him, but I don't know that he, you know, he's a, just a tech guy. You know what I mean? He does all kinds. Yeah, everything. I don't know if he'll be able to do that. I don't know if he'll be able to do it. So where do I go and find somebody who's able to do that? Do you have any yep. idea? Yep, Upwork, Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K. Oh, okay, so just put in what I'm looking for and they'll bid on it. Okay. That's it. Put in the job description. That's how I found my guy. I'll try to do how long does it normally take to like close a foreclosure foreclosure deal that makes sense yeah no no no. it does make sense pre-foreclosure is the same way you'd close a regular deal so you list the property it's in pre-foreclosure and you get a buyer and you go right to closing that's it nothing's different about it now a short sale again a short sale is only when there's no equity they're upside down so just because it's a pre-foreclosure Tracy, they could have equity. So in that case, you just list it and sell it normally and they pay the bank off and everybody goes on their way. A short sale takes forever to close. A short sale takes four to six times, sometimes more months to close. Because you're negotiating with the yeah. bank, right? You're trying yeah. to get the bank, the bank slow. And slow, it's a whole different animal. Yeah. Whole different animal. But, that, but again, that's only like the stuff that I'm showing you guys here you could you I mean, don't even, I'm not even saying try to get short sales. Short sales are just going to come just because what the market's doing. I mean, this is just just to get regular pre foreclosure listings for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, all right, Bob. Interesting. Yeah, I have a question. Lost it. Um, when it comes to well, let me let's explain the process again. So I reached out to this person. They say yeah. We meet, get the paperwork signed with them, and then yeah. I, you know, leverage you, reach out to you, and then you, you guys jump in and just take over that process. When it comes if to like it's a short sale, if it's a short sale, if you determine that they're underwater on their mortgage, I'm actually thinking about doing a workshop on short sales. I should probably do that because just like so, like people know the fundamentals of them, so you know what you're looking mm -hmm. for. Um, is that what you're confused about? Like what what deals yeah. you bring to me? Okay. If it's a regular pre foreclosure listing and they have equity, so property's worth 500,000, Tracy, that's what you're going to sell it for, and they owe 400, you don't have to come to me. I shouldn't even know about that listing because it's a regular listing. You right. sell it for five, they're able to pay the bank off at four. Perfect. Now, if the property's worth 500,000 and they owe 600,000, they're upside down. They owe the bank six hundred thousand dollars to pay off the loan, but the property is only worth five hundred. So they have negative equity of a hundred thousand dollars. Does that make sense now? Yes. Yeah, you can't sell that the traditional way because if you did, the seller is going to have to bring a hundred thousand um, dollars out of pocket to pay the bank. Okay. Those are the deals you bring to me and say, hey, Bob, I have a listing, but we need to do a short sale on this. Yeah, I'm going to do a training on it because I was thinking about it. I definitely need to. I'm going to do a training on short sales. Just let me know when. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll send you guys the link. Do you have any other questions, guys, Joe and Tracy? No, I'm sure I do, but you sent your email. And so, you know, once yeah. I start to go through it, I might just ask you. Yeah, yeah. Reach, out. reach out anytime, anytime yeah. I'm available. I'm happy to help you guys. All right, cool. You're, you're, you're right on schedule. So, Thanks. all right, guys, you have a great day. Thanks okay. for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.